dear friends let me discuss with you today measures of dispersion with an example in python what is measures of dispersion when you hear the word dispersion what does it come to your mind in simple terms measures of dispersion indicate how large the spread of the distribution is around the middle value or the central tendency. It answers unambiguously the question, what is the magnitude of departure from the central tendency for different groups having identical averages? That's very important. So when you are comparing different groups, the averages may be identical, but there could be a lot of variation. And we need to measure the variation with the measure of central tendency alongside so that we have a fairly good idea about the spread of the distribution. There are three important measures of dispersion, namely range, interquartile range, and standard deviation. What is range? Everybody knows. Range is the simplest of all measures of dispersion. It is calculated as the difference between maximum and minimum value in the data set. So range equals max minus min. There is a cautionary tale when you are using range. If one of the values, either maximum or minimum, is an outlier, in other words, an extremely high or extremely low value, then range crumples. You cannot use range as a reliable measure of variation. So you need to understand this when you are using range. There are a lot of applications. Uh, you think of range as a range chart in quality control. Even in the stock market, uh, 70, uh, 52 weeks high, 52 weeks low. So the range gives an idea about the risk of the stock prices. When you buy, what is the risk? It's a measure. At the same time, you must be quite aware that should you use range it depends upon the fact that max or min, you'll have to check whether it is an outlier. To overcome this, there is another excellent measure called interquartile range in short form IQR. So what you do in the interquartile range is you compute this by a formula Q3 minus Q1, where Q3 represents the third quartile, Q1 represents the first quartile, or to put other way, another method of looking at it, the difference between 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. So the middle 50 percent, you find out the range, which is called the interquartile range. So in the data set, of course, you need to arrange them in the ascending order whenever you are talking about uh, interquartile range. And uh, then look at the third quartile and the first quartile. The difference is IQR, which has tremendous capacity to resist outliers. Then of course, the important, all important measure, standard deviation, which forms the cornerstone for statistical inference. And standard deviation plays also an important role in risk return trade-off in the stock market. The formula for sample standard deviation is given below square root of x minus x bar whole squared divided by n minus one. Don't ask me why that divisor is n minus one. Statisticians will tell that unless you put n minus one, it will not be an unbiased estimator of the population standard deviation. In the population standard deviation, you take the population uh, mean subtracted from every observation and divided by n if you denote it the number of observations by n not by n minus one. So in sample 
this is taken like this. And of course, the computer software takes care of that. So we look at the TARP problem again, which is displayed once again for your reference. Uh, the leak was a major problem and we computed already the measures of central tendency and the numbers are there. Now you have to compute range, IQR and standard deviation. So a wonderful uh, coding, very easy to do in Python. Import pandas as PD, then torque is the variable, and enter the values, which is foot pounds, the torque pressure. Then my data is PD dot data frame torque. I have to declare it as a data frame as column vectors, which represent the variables. Here there is only one variable. Then I I'm lazy, so I can directly get a lot of uh, uh, measures in a summary table. So I put summary equal to my data dot describe. And then I declare this as a data frame for future operation, but it is enough if I put this now, then round this to two decimal places, then summary dot columns, I'll have to declare, otherwise Python will give zero as the label item I put here and print summary. Let's run this. You get a beautiful uh, output. Number of observations is 25. Mean is 14.12, standard deviation 2.64. Minimum value of the data set is eight. The 25th percentile are Q1 is 13. The 50th percentile are median is 14. The 75th percentile or Q3 is 16. The maximum value of the data set is 20. It doesn't give as a matter of default the value of mode for the simple reasons most of the situations mode could be, may not be unique. So it may be multimodal, a situation or bimodal, therefore it doesn't declare, but you can compute if you want to. In the summary table is this. Now I am lazy. I know Q1, I know Q2, of course median, Q3 is also known. I know maximum, I know minimum, but I need to write a formula to do the following. Sometimes Python gives uh, warnings, therefore I suppress this here. Import warnings, then warnings dot filter warnings ignore. Then I write here range equal to summary item seven minus summary item three. That is the row zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is the maximum value. Then one, zero, one, two, three is the Starting with zero, three is the minimum value. So I subtract, <clears throat> I get the uh, range value. Then print range. Then Q3, summary item six, print Q3, quartile three is a label. Q1 is summary item four. Let's check this three and uh, uh, six and four. Summary item six is here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is Q3. And 0, 1, 2, uh, 3, uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. 4 is the Q1 value. I put that here, item 4. Then print quartile 1 is equal to Q1. Quartile 3 is equal to Q3. Interquartile range by formula Q3 minus Q1. Q1. Print interquartile range equal to the IQR that I have computed in the previous step. Look at the magnificent output now. Very easy. And you get range is 12. Q3 is 16. Q1 is 13. Interquartile range, the difference between the two is 3. Range is the difference between maximum minus minimum is 12. Now look at the behavior of range. It is 12. And look at IQR. It is 3. The tremendous capacity for interquartile range IQR to resist outliers and therefore it is an excellent measure. 
Now, standard deviation is already there in the previous one, which you have seen here. So we have got a neat summary measures of central tendency. We have covered measures of dispersion also we have covered. So we have some idea about what we are doing. What do the numbers tell you? In the next lesson or video, we will try to address histogram, how to do it in Python and interpret the results. Thank you very much.